One of the leading U.S. middle market lenders, so we're talking about Golub Capital, says that the Fed should actually push ahead with a third rate hike this year that's possibly in December now. In an interview at uh, the Milken Summit in Singapore, CEO Lawrence Golub told Bloomberg's S. Linda Amin that the central bank should speed up the pace of rate increases into next year as well. Listen in. Investors have been trained to hear initial warnings about LIBOR and rates going up and then to see those increases either stopped or pushed out into the future. Even when the Fed signaled three interest rate increases for this year, uh, the market almost immediately started talking about how there might be only two, might be only one. Inflation is measured. The Fed's most favorite measure for this uh, has been running below a 2% target, even though unemployment is down, even though business growth is very strong. We've been seeing in our portfolio, and we have a portfolio of about 300 middle market U.S. companies, very fast growth, uh, growth 7 to 9%. We're seeing cost pressures. The employees, the labor that the companies we lend to want to hire are going up at much higher rates than general market statistics. I think we've seen in August now one of the first indications with core inflation up 0.2%, a 2.4% annual rate, that inflationary pressures really are picking up. So we think there will be, or certainly should be, a third increase this year, and we think there should be at least as many increases, possibly four next year. But there are also views that perhaps Hurricane Irma and Harvey will be a consideration, and the Fed may not move because of that. If I were a Fed, if I were a Fed governor and I wanted an excuse for not raising, those two hurricanes are great excuses for not raising. You can point to the unpredictability of slack and consumer demand in both Florida and Texas. On the other hand, I think the reality will be the opposite. Think about in an economy where construction spending is strong, where construction labor is already tight, adding 150 to 200 billion dollars of new by surprise construction spend over the next 18 months. Construction costs are going to go up. There's going to be some crowding out. I think it's going to end up being inflationary as opposed to contractionary. I want to touch on credit. Yes. What do you make of the pricing of credit? Is it being done appropriately or is there any dislocation that you see right now? Yes. Well, the borrowers in the U.S. are performing very well. So when you look at default rates, default rates are low. You look at intrinsic growth rates in the companies in terms of both revenue and profit, especially in private equity backed businesses, they're strong. You don't see the sort of dispersion of results that make you worry that you're 12 months away from a recession. So the fundamental absolute risk of the borrowers is pretty good. On the other hand, pricing for credit has come way, way down. Pricing is as low as it was before the financial crisis, and leverage levels in companies are way, way up. So leverage levels, multiples of EBITDA, up to seven times in some cases, are higher than they were before the financial crisis. So you have this odd mixture of strong credit fundamentals on the borrowers, but are lenders really getting paid enough for taking that risk? There are massive inflows, especially from foreign investors, into U.S. credit, and we think, especially in junior debt, secondly, debt, subordinated debt, that uh, lenders are not really getting paid for the risk that they're taking. How about the high yields? How will they play out? Because they got dumped, they dropped last month on geopolitical concerns. Uh, what's the outlook? Well, high yield spreads are very, very low. Ultimately, it's going to depend on what credit losses are. Because you can get paid too little for high yield, and as long as you get paid your money back, you've still done okay. We see a, a real loss of credit discipline. Very weak covenants, mushiness in the definition even of what EBITDA is for determining what leverage levels are. Uh, we've even seen some return of some of the synthetic CDOs that were toxic prior to the financial crisis. Some of the major banks have been selling synthetic CDOs on high yield credit default swaps. So we have some very large insurance companies who are taking small amounts of premium but taking the credit risk that default rates and high yield will, will spike up. I think it's a concern. I think it's a risk. Right now, where are the opportunities and where should you stay away from? Well, we think you should stay away from junior debt where you're not getting paid. The senior lenders are uh, senior lenders in credit while yields are down and spreads are down from where they were historically are still very strong. LIBOR's rising if you're in senior debt. As LIBOR goes up, your returns will go up and you have creditor rights. If things go wrong, you're the one who decides when a company gets sold. You're the one who decides how a restructuring gets done. We specialize in the U.S. middle market, which is on a standalone basis the third largest economy in the world. The U.S. middle market, plain vanilla companies are humming along very nicely with 7% growth. Just one final question. In my conversation with Mike Milken yesterday, he said that it is the golden age for private equity. 
you can leverage and you can borrow with no covenants. Uh, Michael is absolutely right. Purchase prices are very high. So for private equity firms who have a strong thesis that they can implement for growth, it's a magnificent time to buy. It's also a, a risk that some private equity firms may buy only because they can, and if they pay too high of a multiple and they don't get multiple expansion, well, that raises some concerns about what profit, what internal rate of return they'll get over their holding period.